In this video, we will look at updating forest details or forest spatial information in Tupuake using the Tupuake mapping tool. The mapping functionality is only available for updating forest details and not for other functions, such as mapping P89 land for registration or for reconfiguring carbon accounting areas. This video will cover use of the mapping tool, use of imagery and reference layers, editing existing registration polygon details, uploading shapefiles, and creating planting and clearing polygons to record the history of your land. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the Tupuake GIS Map Viewer. The Map Viewer is the place you'll come to create and modify spatial information in relation to your ETS application. The Map Viewer has multiple widgets and icons, which I'll run you through so you understand how to use the application. First of all, on the right hand side, you'll see the Choose CAA dropdown. Now, this is particularly useful if you have multiple transactions, uh, multiple CAAs in your transaction, and I can select a CAA and hit confirm, and that will zoom me to that location. So, if you have multiple CAAs, you'll have multiple, CAA, multiple icon, items in that dropdown, and you can select the correct one and hit confirm to zoom in. Otherwise, you can uh, search here for a place name. So if I search for Oakuri, you can see that it comes to the same place. Or I can zoom in and zoom out using the icons up here. Hitting home will take you to the full extent of New Zealand. But if you do that by accident, hitting back will take you back to the previous extent. On the left hand side, we can see that there's a base map widget. Currently, the selected base map is the Linz topographic vector. But we can switch to the top of 50 or the New Zealand imagery just by clicking on it. I'm going to switch back to the top of vector because it's a bit easier to see the underlying information. Additionally, we can have a look at the map layer types. So we've got ETS area and ETS registered land currently showing. If I want to hide one of the layers, I can simply click on the eye icon to hide it. The hamburger, the three horizontal lines, clicking on that will take us to the legend so we can see uh, more information about what's visible on the map. In this case, I can see that there's some registered land, but I'm not sure what type of registered, whether it's unstocked or, un or stocked, is on the map. By clicking on the polygon, we can see some more information about it. So in this case, we can see that this polygon is registered, registered stocked 2017, and we can scroll to see some more information if we want. You'll also note that it's highlighted in blue, and that there's one of two here. Because I clicked quite close to the boundary of two polygons, the map decided to show me both and I can scroll through them and you can see which one is highlighted and then see more information about the highlighted polygon uh, in the attribute table as before. Expanding the widget selector, we can see some more information about the widgets that we're selecting. Um, it's a textual description that helps you to navigate. So we can see we've got the base map and the map layers. The next one on the list is imagery and reference data. In this widget, there's a whole set of imagery that you can use within your application to help you to determine your planting and clearing areas at different points in time. By clicking the filter by map view, it will only show you the areas that are currently covered by imagery. Um, it will only show you imagery that is available for this map area. So turning on the 2021-22 Sentinel-2 imagery will show us some additional information that we can use to, to make our decisions. Uh, note the weird color is because uh, it's the, the, the Sentinel-2 imagery is designed to help you determine the forest boundaries, the forest edges. As well as imagery, there's also some other reference data such as the emissions, emissions return regions and land cover database. Turning these on will have the same effect. You can see that this CAA is in the Waikato Taupo uh, region. Switching back to imagery, um, I can turn on multiple layers at a time. However, it will slow down the map if you do so. Um, so I'm going to turn on the 2021 and 2018-19 imagery so that we can compare them using the swipe and compare tool. 
by selecting the swipe and compare tool. I can choose the left and the right side of imagery and then I can swipe between them to compare how the land looked at that point in time. You can see here that a slider has come across and you can see in the middle of the map in particular some clearing has gone on. This can be helpful for you to, to determine where the planting and clearing areas were and at what points in time. I'll go back and turn off this extra imagery now. As well as the extra imagery, we can use the measure tool to measure areas and measure distances. Simply by clicking and clicking, you can draw, draw lines. Double clicking will finish the line and you can see the length of it on the screen. You can hit new measurement to clear it off and then start again. The next widget is the edit polygons widget and you can see how it has multiple options. This is where you can create and edit information to go, go alongside your ETS application. You can edit existing polygons, create new ones, split polygons, upload shape files and change the snap settings which affects how you edit the features. The first thing I'm going to do is edit an existing polygon to make sure that it has all of the details required. So once I've selected the edit polygons or details button, I can hit ETS area because this is the layer that's visible on the map that we want to edit. Once I've done that, I can select the polygon I want to edit. You'll see it opens up a separate pane which shows the information we saw in the pop-up before but allows us to edit some of the fields. Notice not all of them are editable. For example, this ETS registration date is greyed out. Now I've noticed that the date the planting ended has not been filled in and this is going to be important for when we're layering, layering on clearing and planting areas later on. So I'm going to enter in the 1st of the 6th, 2017 for that and hit save at the bottom. Once I've done that, I can then have a look at that by clicking on it and check that that date has been put in, which it has. Now that the planting end date has been put in, I can create a clearing polygon on top of that. There's two options, two ways to do this. One is through the Create Polygons and Details button, or we can upload an existing shapefile. I'm going to upload a shapefile. There's a notice to say that before you upload your shapefiles, make sure you've checked and repaired your polygons using ArcGIS Pro or your appropriate tool. Additionally, the new Tupuake application requires a different schema, a different data set of attributes and fields within your shapefile in order to load the data in correctly. So make sure you've looked at the MPI website to determine whether your shapefile fits those criteria. I'm going to select one I've already created and hit open. Once I hit load, it'll load a visual queue on the map, but not it won't be until we validate the records that it'll actually try and load the data in. You can see that it's loaded in a CAA with two records, no bad, and this is a pass. I can hit save. And that will load it into the map. You'll see that we've got some validation errors at the bottom here, and um, it gives us, gives us some tips on how to fix the errors. So the first one is the polygon you've mapped is outside the registered area or overlaps more than one registered area. We can see more information by clicking on the error, error, error message or we can click the I want to to see more information about what we can do to fix it. We can either zoom to the polygon, edit details, this is more relevant if, you're, if your issue is an attribute issue, delete the polygon entirely so that you can start again show the invalid polygon sections, which we're going to do, or auto-correct auto the invalid polygon sections, which we'll do after we've seen the invalid sections. 
So you can see that there's a red hatch now on the invalid section. And we can validate that that is in fact correctly outside of the registered area. So I'm going to also correct the invalid polygon selection sections. You can see that it automatically removes the outside area. And then if we want, we can click and drag to move these areas inside. If we if the polygon that has been loaded from the check file isn't quite correct, you can you can move these around as you need. You can also right click one to get rid of it if you made a mistake. Uh, that's a vertex, sorry, if you, if, you, if you need to modify or remove a vertex, you can right click on it to get rid of it. So we can see that's fixed one of the validation errors. We also need to fix this other one, which is an attribute error. So I can click I want to and click edit details. Now I've noticed that the edit polygon detail screen is already up on the left hand side, so I don't need to click that again. You can see it's already highlighted. The clearance type is the, the missing field or the invalid field. And so I just need to fix that before it'll allow me to save it. Um, I need to change that to clearance or harvest. Once I've done that and hit save, you'll notice that the polygon has been added to the map. I will note at this stage, if you would leave the page, either by clicking exit or back or refreshing the page, you'll lose your edits. We're in what's called an edit session at the moment, and it's not actually persisted to the database until you go to I want to and hit save draft. I'm going to do that now. So the latest changes are saved. So if I was to exit now and come back into the map, that polygon would still be there. I'm now going to add a planting area over the top of that. And but before I do, I'm just going to check by clicking on it, which, what year the clearing was, was performed. So it was done in December, 2017. So I know that I can put a date in that's any time after the 31st of December, 2017 is when my planted started again. To create my planting area, I can go to create polygons and details, click on planted and start to draw an area. Now, I know that there'll be validation errors if I draw outside of this polygon, um, because this is or it still remains stocked land and this is invalid area. But, the, 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 but as we've seen already, the application is clever enough to clear out those invalid areas. So I can roughly trace around this area. But before I do, I'll show you what what happens if you turn on the snapping settings because at the moment this is all freehand drawing. If we do want to be a bit more careful about how we're drawing this polygon we can turn snapping on to make sure that we're following these lines more accurately. So if I go back out of the editor and go to snap settings you can see that snapping is enabled but it's not set to snap against any particular layer. So if I turn on snapping against the ETS area hit back and now when I go into the to, to create polygons and details and hit planted, you'll see that it actually starts snapping to these, these corners and highlighting the, the, the lines to snap to. If I click now, you'll see that I can, it highlights the sections, the segments of the, the polygon, and I can click on these to uh, make sure that I'm, I'm following it exactly. As well as this option, I can go back and start again and use the trace tool. So if I press T on the keyboard, I can have it automatically follow the boundaries of the polygon. So I don't need to be particularly careful about how I draw it because it's automatically going to follow that polygon that already exists. So if I've, if I've planted the exact same area that I've cleared, I can use the trace tool to make it follow along there. Once I've generated that, I need to fill in some information about that forest. So I'm going to put plant one as my forest identifier, add another compartment identifier, set the date planting started, as the first of the first 2018 and date planted ending planting ended was the first of the sixth 2018. 
I need to set some more information about the establishment method. So in this case, it was direct planting. Um, some information about the forest type. And I'm going to choose indigenous. Um, the main species then is provided with a recommended list of different types of different species. Um, I can choose other ones such as beeches or oaks, but they're not recommended as they're not native species or indigenous species. I'm going to say it's Manuka Kanuka and choose the species name again from the recommended list. I can set the number of trees. And you can see that it's automatically calculated the number of trees per hectare. If I hit save, I've done well. There are no matching validation errors here because I've just drawn exactly along the, 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 the clearance polygon, which was also valid. If I realise I've made a mistake, I can actually hit the undo button at the top of here um, and you can see that that will remove the planting area. If I decide I want it back again, I can hit redo at the top. You can undo back through all of the previous history, um, back to when you last hit save draft. So you'll remember that we hit save draft after we uh, made the edits to this area, so there's only one edit. Uh, in, in, in the editor session. Again, once I then hit save draft, um, I won't be able to undo any changes during that session. Um, if I want to discard all of the mapping changes that I've made, I can hit the discard mapping changes and that will close the transaction and you'll have to start again from the start. Hitting submit will submit your changes as part of your ETS application.